The majority there on the Privileges Committee in Parliament is pushing for the seat of the embattled Domi Kobanya MP Sarah Jazavu to be declared vacant. Now, according to the Privileges Committee, the report that has been laid and cited by Joy News, the majority is arguing that Sarah Jazavu failed to take the opportunities afforded her to render an explanation on why she should not lose her seat. Well, parliamentary correspondent Kweku Asanti has been telling us more about the situation in the House. And the report of the Privileges Committee was placed in Parliament on Monday. We now have exclusive access of some of these recommendations from the committee. We know that the report that was circulated among MPs recommended, among others, that the two MPs, Kennedy Japan and Harry Court, to be pardoned. When it came to Sarah Jasa for House led that decision to the House. But now the report that has been laid in the House says specifically that Sarah Jasa failed to appear before MPs to explain why she should not lose her seat. And because of this, by virtue of a case, Professor Kweku Asare versus the Attorney General, the seat of Sarah Jwasafo is declared vacant. The minority on that committee say that is not the agreement they had and that such a decision was not even taken. It is not clear yet when this report will be debated and a vote taken, but they say that when the report is taken, they will make the argument forcefully that the majority have just put out a report that does not reflect the what the report the committee did. So MPs are mostly tightly about the situation when it comes to such situations that affect their MPs. They want to wait for the report to be debated on the floor first. And that's the latest from the House. Samir Obeying is Executive Director for the Parliamentary uh, Network Africa. Thank you so much, sir, for your time here on the poll. So, um, we just have a few hours, some say days, to go. Uh, but what do you foresee happening on this report um, that, that has a divided front as we speak? I understood your correspondence right, Blessed. Um, it is that the report has been laid in Parliament and it is awaiting the discussion stage. All right. The report has been laid in Parliament then, of course, it suggests to me that it is the final report from the committee, uh, which, you know, by the normal process, it has to be laid. Uh, it takes a day or two, and then the debate on the report is done, and the adoption is also done. Parliament is expected to rise, if I am correct, perhaps tomorrow for its long break, either tomorrow or maybe Friday. I'm not too sure. Mm. Now, what that means is that on the order paper of parliament, which is the document that communicates the agenda for the various sitting days, we should be able to know whether the report will be taken today or even tomorrow, because on a particular day's order paper, there is a provisional order paper to give an indication of what's likely to happen the next day. But we know that during last days of sittings like this, there are usually addendums that you know, um, come to the order paper. But it is my expectation that the committee's report will be discussed, a decision will be taken on the matter before the House goes on recess. It will be completely unacceptable if the House does not conclude on this subject matter before its long break, because the long break is expected to span up to about October. Mm. And I don't think that a referral mm. that already the committee is late on should be delayed any further. But you're, so quite, you're, you're quite vexed in the matters of parliament. Here we are having a minority side on that committee say they disagree with some of the portions contained in that report. So is there any opportunity for the minority to seek redress, if I could use that, that word loosely? Well, again, I heard about the disagreements from the minority side at the stage when you know, the chairman of the committee spoke. Right. Not too sure that at this stage, and of course at that stage, many of them admitted that a full report was not ready. Mm. I'm not too sure that now that, at least from your correspondence, a report has been laid, whether there is still disagreement on the laid report. I would be particularly surprised if there was disagreement on the report that has been laid, because to have a report laid, the various sides of the committee, at least the leadership, would have you know, seen the report that the clerks to the committee had done and would have vetted it and agreed that this is actually what we want to be communicated to the House. But be that as it may, of course, when a report is laid, usually you would have the chairperson of the, of the committee 
you know, move the motion, you would, uh, I mean, stating a few words here and then, reading portions of the report, you would have the ranking member of the committee who would come from the minority side, also seconding the motion. And of course, opportunity exists for them to make their cases if they feel that what has been captured is not really what needs to be captured. But I must say that I would particularly, uh, you know, be scandalized. I said that last time on your, on your, on your platform. Uh, if, you know, uh, there is any lesser uh, repercussion on the pathway that the honorable member for Don Kwabinya had taken the privileges committee and perhaps the entire Ghana, if there is any lesser repercussion, I would be scandalized. And of course, I, I mean, I think it is important to serve notice that, you know, organizations like ours will not take these kind of situation light because we need not set a precedent that would come back to hurt us when it comes to MPs' attendance and absenteeism in Parliament. Uh, but even for the legislator herself, her fate hangs in the balance. We're not sure of what the House may decide on uh, in terms of declaring the seats vacant. Do you need the input of the MPs in terms of adopting this um, report? And what could be the implications if we have, say, the entire minority side of the House boycott the process? Well, I'll be particularly surprised to have a minority side boycott for the process. In fact, in my opinion, there'll be absolutely no justification for it. And they should have reason to, you know, explain to the good people of Ghana if such a decision gets taken. But that having been said, the, we know that the member of parliament has actually been away since August last year. We are in July. What it means is that one full year, one full year has been away from parliamentary proceedings. Parliament goes on recess you know, uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. What that means is that, you know, missed an opportunity to be part of parliamentary sittings and proceedings, missed an opportunity to represent their people, uh, her people, which is very, very critical for a full year. I think that the, at least from what we are hearing from the grapevine, the, we, I mean, we are not expecting anything lesser than that. And mm -hmm. parliament as an institution and members of parliament as individuals should be bold enough to take the decisions that needs to be taken because, like I said again, we do not want to set a precedent that will come back biting and will make controlling attendance to parliaments completely, completely uh, uh, unchecked. Uh, I think that that would not be very good for the institution. Uh, and in of fact, uh, monitoring developments in parliament, uh, there are processes already underway to redefine absenteeism in the House. So what's your take on the attempts by the MPs themselves to <laughs> reconfigure, if we could use that word, uh, the definition of the term itself? Well, you see, um, so far as I am concerned, a member of parliament is actually attending to parliamentary business when he or she is at committee, uh, on the floor of, of the house at plenary, you know, or on an assignment that has been properly sanctioned. And it behoves on the institution of parliament to put in place mechanisms rather than the current, you know, very, in my opinion, useless and ineffective system that they use in recording attendance. We have heard from the institution of parliament, the parliamentary service for years, that they were going to introduce a clock in system that allows us to know which member of parliament yeah. has entered the chamber, has entered the system. They've promised this over and over. In fact, in some instances, they indicated that the procurement processes had begun. And if procurement processes can take several years to be concluded, on a matter that is actually hurting the institution of parliament, then that, that is ineffectiveness. And this decision is not a decision that members of parliament should be taking. It is behoves on the parliamentary service, the clerk of parliament, the administrators of parliament, to make sure that this is done. Because if you have a problem or a challenge that keeps coming back at you and keeps causing problems, effective leadership requires that you nip it in the bud one time, and don't wait until it causes you even further problems. But for me, there's this question that remains unresolved, and, and that's back to the Ajwasafu case. What would a sanction on Ajwasafu mean yeah. to absentee yeah. him in the House? The, the fear is that, I mean, the MPs would not show up anyway if they fail to, uh, or if they deem to. I mean, they don't want to show up, they won't show up because they feel they are elected officers. It's been a big hurdle getting all of them uh, to just stick and stay through the process. So what problem will that solve if we have uh, a Joseph seat declared vacant? We have a constitutional provision, the constitution, the supreme law of the land, that in my opinion has been terribly raped by the conduct 
of the Honorable Member of Parliament, uh, first of all, by absenting herself from Parliament without permission. And I keep hearing this whole thing about, you know, we ask permission from the, uh, the president and the president granted it. That is not the parliamentary process. You know, we, we, we have a situation where the referral to the Privileges Committee has been blatantly, mm. you know, disregarded. If no action is taken, what it means now is that a member of parliament who is absenting himself or herself, you know, would do that without regard. And of course, that member of parliament will take the Ajoa Safo approach, in my opinion, anytime he or she gets referred to the Privileges Committee because there is precedence. But if this is dealt with strongly, if I am a member of parliament, I know that if I flout that constitutional provision, there are consequences and there is an example that has been cited and for which reason I would, you know, be minded about that. For me... The MPs will never stop being truant. I don't think that you MPs agree. would stop being truant. I mean, of course, I, you don't really expect that to happen. But what do you expect to happen? And of course, the Constitution did not anticipate that MPs will come to Parliament all the time. But at least it gives a certain threshold within which you cannot flout. Number two, it gives a certain procedure that you must use if you must be absent. And then number three, it shows a certain procedure that gives you the opportunity to explain yourself if you are absent and, and, and you've not given reason. These are steps that, in my opinion, the framers of the constitution took so that there is natural justice, so that you know it is anticipating the normal tendencies and the normal you know, happenings of things as a, as a human institution where you will have people absenting themselves. But so that it is very clear that you cannot be perpetually absent from work. I keep saying this all the time. If a teacher or a nurse or a doctor or anybody in Ghana who is working within the public service dares attempt what has been tried by the Honorable Member of Parliament, the person will not live a, another day, you know, to, 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 to still hold on to yeah. his or her job. And that is the more reason why we must send a signal that there are no, we are not in an animal farm situation where some humans are more important than other humans. So, I mean, what's still in doubt is the mode of declaring the seats vacant. Many have argued that the approach by the first deputy speaker indicating that once you fail to t show up before the privileges committee, um, you automatically forfeit your seat. It's coming to question, what's the standing orders um, position on, on this matter, for instance? Well, I don't have the standing orders here to quote verbatim, but what I know for a fact, and, and for me, sometimes I wonder whether the first deputy speaker was probably not misquoted because I have not specifically heard the exact words that he used. But what I know the process is to be is that once a referral has been made to the institution of a committee of parliament, mm. that committee must necessarily report to the plenary for the plenary to adopt its report so that a decision is deemed fully taken. If I, uh, uh, of course, I would not have a problem with anybody who says that once the committee has recommended this, it is expected that the committee's recommendation will go without saying because the constitution says that the privileges committee shall make a determination. But the committee's report cannot be a decision of the privileges committee and the house as a whole if it is not laid on the floor of parliament. So for me, I think it's a very simple process. Committee has been assigned a task you finish with your task, whatever your decisions are, bring it to the plenary so that the House of Records, because it is only at plenary that you have hazards, the official report of parliament. The hazard must capture such an important issue, you know, and the hazard only captures it if the matter is raised at plenary. Hazards do not capture committee proceedings. And so it is important to bring it there because for such an important matter, you need the hazards to reflect the decision. Okay. We'll see what happens in the coming days or in the next few hours. That's uh, Sami Obi, Executive Director for the Parliamentary Network Africa. You're still with us here on The Pulse on the Join News Channel. Still to come, we'll tell you about the minority in Parliament and why they still believe that the Bank of Ghana printed some 22 billion cities um, from their quarters. We'll tell you why shortly. Please stay.